Good afternoon. It's great to be here. Well, I, I think it's great to be here because when I saw my speaking slot, I noticed that PGP was being followed by the FBI. And for those of you who know our history, you'll know why we're a little bit sensitive about that. Today, we're going to talk about what we've learned in 40 years of cloud computing. And why did I pick that? Well, I picked that because fundamentally, those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it. If we're tasked with securing this thing called the cloud, what does that really mean? I thought a lot about this, and I went and talked to customers, I talked to analysts, I talked to a very influential person in my life uh, who was the chairman of our board, and it was a very interesting set of feedback that I got. In the past, there were several things that jumped out about securing what we call the cloud, because in many ways we've been doing this for a number of years. The cloud is made up of a lot of technologies that we've used through eras of computing. And in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to run through a brief history of that and show you what we can learn from the past and how it can help us as we go forward into this era of the cloud. Has anybody here been confused about the cloud this week? I have. Because the cloud is either going to be the savior of ownership of IT, it's also never going to make it because it's got security flaws in it. And I hear all of these different people loudly talking about this in ways that reminds me of other eras of computing that have happened. How did we get here? Is it architecture? Is it people shouting loudly because they think this is the next big thing to get a couple dollars more value in their stock? Depending on who you talk to, it's an interesting set, and it's a conundrum for us in the room that are vendors, we've got some ownership and the problems with that. And really, we owe it to you, the consumer of technologies, of how we can help you plan for this. If you look in the 60s and 70s, basically the era of mainframes. And I talked to the, a friend of mine from IBM who told me, you know, the most interesting thing in our booth at RSA is the mainframe. People come over to it and point at it and say, wow, a mainframe like it's a relic or a dinosaur. Yet, this is one of the key tenets of cloud computing. Back in the 60s and 70s, this particular environment was dominated by one key security feature, authentication, and one key physical security, locks, guards. People didn't allow people near it. So those were the big tenets. And over time, it evolved. When this came, it replaced a lot of manual processes and it did things that people thought could never be done for business. Well, then the 70s happened. And besides disco, which a lot of us want to forget, this became an era of distributed computing. It began the year of the LAN, which, starting out my career at Xerox back in 1980, I can remember when the year of the LAN lasted 15 years. And the key issues with the year of the LAN were, how are we going to secure all of this information that is now coming out of the mainframe and, oh Lord, getting near the end user. And this was the beginning of the end user's play and control of information. And it required a different change in the way we thought about information and data. It required that data itself had to be more secure because authentication and physical controls weren't enough. And then we entered the 90s. And the 90s opened a whole new era of empowerment, not only for the user, but for productivity and other types of computing devices. And the security of the last two eras, the 70s to the 90s and 90s plus, gave us the security industry as a standalone business. The rise of companies like McAfee and Symantec. The rise of companies like Checkpoint. They all came because as we distributed the environment and empowered the end user, we had to worry more and more about how we protected data. PGP was born in the 90s. Phil Zimmerman thought, wow, at some point, nation states are going to want to read your email. They're going to want to inspect your businesses. Now, we know nothing about that today, right? That has never happened. As Aurora showed us, the best companies in the world are still subject to that data being out there and being a currency and being valuable. So three eras of computing that lead us up to the era we're currently in, and we're currently in a cloud computing era. All the tenants are there. People are moving to the cloud quickly. It's undeniable it's going to happen. The money, the amount of commerce that this will generate, the ability to lower total cost of ownership for IT communities worldwide, 
The enablement of collaboration, these are all things that will once again lead to more productivity, better products, and a better environment. It also is a chance to lead to more and more fundamental problems with the loss of data. Told you was an influential guy in my life. This was the chairman of the board. Some of you might know Max Hopper. Some of you might say, who's Max Hopper and why is Phil Dunkelberger talking about him? It's simple. Max Hopper was a guy back in the 60s who built the distributed environment that was known as the Sabre system for American Airlines. Anybody who's ever made an online reservation in the 2000s and beyond on the Orbit system, that was his team. He also did something, if you've ever gone to a Versateller from Bank of America, his team also put that in the industry. So I went to Max when he was our chairman when I was going to give this talk, and I said, Max, can you help me understand you built systems from the 60s to the 90s. What were the key tenets of protecting data through these eras? Because I'm going to get up and talk about cloud computing. He said, Phil, there were two basic tenets you had to worry about through all three of those eras. One was access control. The other was security of data, rest, and emotion. Fundamentally, those were the two key tenets that you had to worry about through 30 years. And he said it will be no different from a core technology standpoint as we move things to the cloud. He said, actually, the cloud gives you more opportunity to use these in varied and different ways. Uh, Max, unfortunately, passed away uh, about a month ago. Uh, he was a great man, great mentor, and the computing industry as a whole, and PGP in particular the last few years, uh, was very proud to have him. And he was the core of the idea of talking about these things. Max also said, how have we done? So I said, how have we done? He said, yeah. How are we doing on that control? How are we doing on that data protection? Well, data breaches are now costing us $204 per record, a new high. We've been measuring it for five years, the Poneman Institute, significant money invested in losing data. Almost $7 million per incident of loss of data. So even though access control and data protection have been the core tenet for the past 30 years, of computing, as we go to the cloud, we still are struggling with getting a hold of this concept. Some of the other things that are very frightening that when you, you think about it in their context, 56% of the malware written today is designed to steal data. 42% of the data breaches today happen with a third party involved, either a service provider or a consultant. When you stop and think about that, you think to yourself, Wow, are we really ready to go to the cloud? Are we really ready to share this data anywhere and everywhere? That's, again, the conundrum. Core concept, 30 years of it. We haven't been doing well with it on premise. And now we're talking about putting it everywhere. 70% of the physicians are concerned about privacy and controls in their environment. So most of the people that are living in the United States have heard there's a little debate going on in the country called the healthcare debate. It eats up most of the press we have. And one of the core tenets of it is how are we going to automate healthcare? How are we going to make it more efficient and effective? Because most of the systems there are systems that I've already showed you pictures of. The hospital my mother was in recently still running Vaxes. Yeah, it's a pretty modern hospital. Uh, a friend of mine's mom was in a similar situation, and he was uh, war driving out in the parking lot and realized he could read patient in room 216's Vitals, because their wireless networks weren't locked down. These are the kind of things that are going on today, and yet 70% of the physicians, when they were asked, said their number one issue with going to automated systems is they're afraid of putting people's data online. The ride in this morning. Had a really interesting conversation with uh, the guy that gave him the ride from the hotel. I asked him, I said, are you familiar with what we're doing over at the RSA conference? He goes, no. I said, I'm not familiar with that. I said, do you do anything online? He said, yeah, but I'm doing less and less. I said, why is that? He said, I'm afraid. He said, you know, I went to my kid's Facebook page, and you'd be amazed at things that they put on Facebook today. Well, those out there in the audience that are familiar with that know that that's a big problem, but it's not going away. We've got a generation of people who have been raised with computers, and they're comfortable with them. They're happy doing business with them. And security, that's the other guy's problem. Fundamentally, we as practitioners and we as suppliers are going to have to figure out how do we take advantage of these new things that can help us and yet at the same time protect the data. 